Welcome to Insight, today produced in collaboration with KCOS 13, El Paso Public Television. Today we are chatting with Salvador Balcota, Chief Executive Officer of Centro de Salud Familiar La Fe. Salvador has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Salvador, for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting us. Your organization is so unique. It is so embedded in the community. It's 50 years old. Tell us how this organization was founded and its mission today. You know, the organization was founded in 1967 in the tenements of Segundo Barrio, uh, that's South El Paso, uh, the third poorest zip code in the country at that time. Centro Salud Familia La Fe was born out of women being in patios mm -hmm. during those summer nights, during those winter nights, and saying, you know, we need an organization that can help us with housing an organization that help, can help us with immigration, an organization that can help us with violence, an organization that can help us with, with our youth, you know? So what type of programs do you offer today? Well, today we, we have a, a comprehensive prim primary community health center, which, which offers uh, your traditional primary health care. It's walk-in? It's, it's walking and appointments, uh, mostly appointments. Uh, it's a federally qualified health center. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, comprehensive dental services. We have um, eye services, women, infant, and children programs. We have uh, pediatric and adolescent services. We have immunizations for both children, adolescents, and adults. We have ancillary programs like laboratory services, right. x-ray services, pharmacy services. So these are all the types of services that are first very costly, secondly, um, extract funding and funds from families who have very few funds uh, regardless, funds for drugs. This is, this is the, these are the types of, of services and products that in order to afford them, you end up impoverishing yourself unless you, f you find some sort of support. Well, of course. Most of our people, uh, even with the minimum pay that we ask for, which is $20, a lot of times can't afford those $20. We've got to provide the services whether they can pay or not. Right. Let me tell you, though, we, we uh, push that they pay. We push that they find some type of, of money so that the organization can come around. There's, so a lot of times when you have the, some negative ideologies, I call it negative ideologies in the sense that we go like, well, our people are poor. We shouldn't charge them anything. Everything should be free. Isn't that a little paternalistic? Well, it's more than paternalistic. A lot of times it's, it's, it's a, a death sentence to yourself. Because a lot of these centers that have refused throughout the years to bring in money from the community itself have died. Right. You know? And because of somebody's, some person's uh, naive, idealistic notion that poor people can't take care of themselves, destroys something that could have grown like we've grown. So you're, you're coming to poverty with an understanding of the circumstance, but it is, it is under, an understanding with also a sense of responsibility. In other words, you understand that sometimes those means are not available your people understand that sometimes those, those means are not available. But the attempt to find the means is really important for self-respect and for communities being able to support their own range of services in the, in the guise of Centro de Salud Familiar La Fe. That whole idea of let's move as far as we possibly can given our means, let's, let's take that next step if we can take it. And, and that's the insistence that you're talking about. I think most importantly is that you find that a lot of these people 
will create a peer type of approach right. and a peer type of, type of pressure to make individuals come in and become part of the process, right. become part of the solution, right? Part of the family. Exactly. You know, I mean, when the feds come to our offices and they sit there and it's the first time that they landed La Fe and they're kind of like a little bit leery, if you will, because all of a sudden the, the offices have all these posters of not only Chicano movement, but of other related movements, mm -hmm. you know? whether it be the African-American movement or whether it be, you know, movements from all over the world. You know, they see a big Che Guevara that says, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Talk about your other programs. We're teaching people how to speak English. You know, we're teaching some of the people that dropped out of school. We're getting them to get their GEDs. Uh, we're bringing in some uh, vocational types of programs with the help of like the community college here, uh, we're doing different types of, of, of workplace type of functions, you know, the creating catalyst uh, uh, programs for micro enterprise. Uh, this day we've, we've got a, an educational culinary school. We've got a, a food streetcar program. Uh, We've got a charter school, which, uh, which we're super proud of, right? Because we've got a pre-K through eighth grade charter school where we're, we've got almost 300 kids in a dual language environment, in, a thematic, in a thematic uh, uh, learning program. How many people do you serve annually? Well, we serve anywhere from 24, 20 to 24,000 people a year. What is your what is your budget like to serve these 20, 20 to twenty four thousand people annually? When we took over the organization in nineteen ninety two, the federal budget for La Fe was three million dollars. One clinic, right. right around maybe seventy employees. Today, twenty five years later, the the federal budget is six million dollars. Mm -hmm with seven clinics and uh, about 275 full-time employees and ab about another 150 part-time employees. And what is your total budget? The total budget is $26 million. $26 million. So $20 million comes from grants, comes from uh, revenue. revenue and fundraising. Yes. That's not, that's, that's not very common, okay? Right. You usually see the other. Right. You usually the, see the, the, the federal grant money uh, dominating and then then the the other funds sort of lagging behind. And then as soon as the there's a little bit of a shift in federal funding, you go into crisis. Exactly. But that's not how you've developed your finances. It's a phenomenal story. I'm, I'm so blessed that that uh, you would share the story of uh, Centro de Salud Familiar. La Fe with us, Salvador um, Balcorta. Thank you so much for sharing the history of the organization, the work that you do, and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you for inviting us, and I guess we need about 10 more of these interviews to, to really tell you the whole story. Thank you. Muchas gracias. We'll have to do that again. Thank you. <laughs>